New videos every day. Talking about the antipsychotic drugs, there are basically two kinds. The older type antipsychotics, which are called the typical uh, neuroleptics, were introduced in the 1950s, in the middle of the 1950s. And they were drugs like Haldol and Prolixin and um, Thorazine, which was the first one that was introduced. And these drugs uh, are still being used, but they have been replaced uh, in some cases and supplemented in other cases by what are called the atypical antipsychotic drugs. And those are the newer drugs that were introduced in the 1990s. Such drugs as Zyprexa, Z-Y-P-R-E-X-A, and Respirdol. Those are the best known of the newer and uh, atypical antipsychotic drugs. And they were supposed to be better than the old style antipsychotics or neuroleptics. Uh, and they were supposed to be better because they had fewer side effects or less damaging side effects. The older uh, antipsychotic drugs were well known for causing a terrible neurological condition called tardive dyskinesia. The newer drugs, it is claimed, do not cause that problem, or at least do not cause it to the same degree. But with the atypical uh, neuroleptics, they cause other problems that lead to even more severe problems. And among the problems uh, are excessive weight gain, leading ultimately to the development of diabetes. And there were clinical studies done for Zyprexa and Respirdol and, and other a atypical neuroleptics. But with the Zyprexa, they found out that the average weight gain over a year's period was 26 pounds. And that was consistent uh, so that over a period of four years, uh, the likelihood w w would be that the individual would gain upwards of 100 pounds. That kind of excessive weight gain is so detrimental to the person's health. And people were not warned sufficiently about that. And in the initial reports uh, introducing uh, the new drug to the professional community, the weight gain problem was played down. Uh, another thing that was played down was the very high mortality rate produced by Zyprexa. According to the clinical studies that were not originally published in their true form, but um, a journalist uh, writer, Robert Whitaker from the Boston area, he was successful in obtaining the um, uh, results of the clinical trials from the FDA under the Freedom of Information Act. And a large part of his very important book called Mad in America uh, described uh, what these uh, clinical reports uh, had to say about the real effects of the atypical antipsychotic drugs. And in the case of Zyprexa, one of the little bits of information that wasn't reported in the published studies was that there was a mortality rate of 1 in 125. Well, that's uh, a huge rate, and that in itself should have uh, led the FDA to reject the request on the part of Eli Lilly, the manufacturer, for permission and authorization to manufacture and distribute and promote this drug. But the FDA didn't act on the findings, the true findings of the clinical studies. Instead, they, they let it pass, and Zyprexa became a very popular, wide, widely distributed uh, drug for people labeled schizophrenia. And Eli Lilly has acknowledged that in the 10 or 11 years since the drug was introduced, more than 20 million people have taken it. And if you were to extrapolate from that figure of one, one in 125 who participated in the clinical trials, who died as a result of that, 
you would come up with a figure of 160,000 deaths worldwide from the use of Zyprexa. And even today, that figure and those figures are not at all well known by the public and doctors continue prescribing uh, Zyprexa to an estimated uh, 2 million people a year worldwide. And uh, of course, these disastrous effects continue without any concern on the part of the psychiatric community or the pharmaceutical companies or the government, uh, the federal government itself. Mm -hmm.